So let's start off like from the beginning, from basically the section from basically when you're born till up till middle school, middle school time okay. before you, you know, you had to make that tough decision. Um, growing up, life was, uh, I mean, just very similar to a lot of people, but it was, it was a, just a simpler version of it. Um, there's really no technology, there's no electricity, there's no uh, TVs, no microwaves, no uh, washers and dryers. Um, it was, it was uh, plain. It's kind of like life almost back in like the early 1900s almost, um, to a certain extent. From the age of uh, probably six to probably nine or so. I really didn't like school. Um, uh, kindergarten, first, second grade, I was just kind of bored with it, honestly. I remember the uh, the day of our eighth grade promotion ceremony. I Afterwards, I went home and told my mom that um, that I wanted, like, really wanted to go to high school that fall, that, you know, that very next fall or whatever, after summer was over. And uh, she kind of, like, looked at me and, you know, was was kind of, you know, not really, kind of surprised, I guess, but she kind of laughed it off and, and really, I kind of knew from, from her actions that it was not really like something that she would even take seriously because she just, she wasn't considering it at all. Um, so I kind of left it that, that summer and I kind of, you know, I mentioned it a couple times, but once that fall came around, I, I like talked to him a little bit and I had kind of known before that it wasn't, I would have to be like a miracle to, to ha allow them to, you know, for me to go back or whatever. So I just kind of left it, didn't really try that hard that summer. And then uh, time went on, uh, I turned 16 years old. One of my neighbors had like a furniture finishing shop or whatever. Uh, and I, would, I worked there for two years. Um, I, I, I didn't really, I mean, I liked the people I was working with and everything, but like I knew that the work that I was doing was something that uh, I didn't want to do for the rest of my life. Obviously, I was making uh, a pretty decent amount of money for a, a guy my age. Um, I just, I, there wasn't, there was something not right about the position I was in. I wasn't, I, I knew the future that I was envisioning that I would have wasn't going to come about with the things that I was doing. This is the Delta Tau Delta house, the Beta Zeta chapter on Butler University's campus. Welcome. So like, this is all bubbles. Oh, hi. What's up, dude? That's all bubbles. That's where the kitchen goes to. Um, and here's my room. And there's my bed. My little hut down there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there's my... Jordan picture. <laughs> and another Jordan picture. Well, I, pretty much the first day I was exposed to adults, so like my SOG was adult, my RA was adult, and like some of the first people I met were adults, and I just like, from the beginning I wasn't sure about like Greek life anyway. Um, I knew that like if it was gonna deter from my academics that I, like I knew what I was here for basically. But like when I met those guys, those guys just like, showed me that like there's there is two sides of a Greek house you, yes you can't have fun but those guys were like leaders on this campus didn't really tell my parents at first because I didn't like I kind of knew um, their outlook like they don't really know much about Greek life anyway like they literally like asked me what is this about and stuff um, or, like what 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 is what is a fraternity and so what do you do you know and I had to kind of explain it and stuff and like make it make it seem like it's well, not even seem like because it's not you know as bad as a lot of people like view it these days or whatever. But like, they they weren't really like gonna financially support me anyway, which they like haven't any like in any of this stuff. So like it wasn't their call, I guess. They kind of looked like look at it like eh, uh, but that's I mean that was kind of they haven't really they haven't really like done anything with Dell. They haven't really associated with them. We haven't I mean. We don't really talk about it, honestly. Like, they know I'm in it, they know I live in the house, they know, like, all that, but they just don't really, 
they don't involve themselves and stuff with it, I guess. They, it's just not their thing. At, at some point, um, a, year, a year passed, and I, you know, I was 16, and that next summer, um, I, I, I mean, I wanted to go back again, but I, I really knew, I mean, it was kinda, I was 16 already, and I, I just, I wasn't really in the right state of mind, I guess. I, I probably wasn't mature enough to really make that big step yet. But by the time, time that year and a half or whatever later, once that winter started rolling around, I, I started hanging out with my old school friends again, and they kept telling me, you know, you need to come back, you need to come back. Um, and I, I always wanted, I knew I wanted to, I always knew I wanted to. So coming into that summer, I was, you know, I was, I was like, this is my last shot. Um, I'm 17 years old, and if I wait any longer, I'm gonna be like 25 in high school, so I can't be doing that. That summer, I, you know, I had conversations and stuff with my parents. There wasn't much there. It was just more like arguing. I remember one night, um, probably 10, 11 o'clock at night, I was sitting um, in the, the parking lot of a Taco Bell in my hometown, and I wrote my parents a two-page letter, just kind of laid it all out, um, my side of the story, why I wanted to do it, um, you know, what, what, why I thought it was like a good idea, and why I thought maybe it's not, maybe they should maybe take their foot off a little bit and maybe allow me to, to make decisions on my own, I guess. Probably two weeks or so passed. We didn't really talk during that two weeks. I mean, we talked casually, but not, I mean, not about that. I knew they had read it and everything. It was kind of kind of like an awkward time. I remember school started that, that fall. Um, it started on a Tuesday. They went through Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, four days of school, and that weekend I was like, this is my last shot. I can, I can go back now. Four days in, I can still go back, but after this, it's, it's like this is my last shot. So that weekend, I remember Sunday night, um, sat down with both my parents and just had a long conversation, three, probably three hours, at least four hours maybe. And I finally got them to sign my enrollment, uh, enrollment forms and stuff for, for high school. And I went from working that previous week to going back right back to high school uh, after not have gone, having, having gone to school for two, two, a little over two years. I would say now, fast forwarding a couple of years, it's probably one of the best situations that I've ever had with them, but it was definitely a time of me kind of stepping out of my own um, and just saying, this is what I'm gonna do, um, take control of my life, and I'm, this is how I'm gonna roll. Um, makes you kind of grow up, I guess, Make, makes you have, puts a lot of responsibilities on your shoulder. You gotta kind of fend for yourself. Start the normal starters tonight. We'll be starting at guard number 11, Norman Miller. He's a junior. At the other guard, number 13, uh, the guy that brings the ball up the floor, Elijah Hales. How soon was it when you like said, "Hey, yeah, I'm gonna play basketball. I'm gonna play soccer. I'm gonna play this sport." I think probably two, three weeks into the school year, I heard of our first open basketball open gym. I was like, "Hey, that's." That's where I should be, so I went, and I remember um, none of the coaches really knew me. A lot of the players, like some of the players knew me because I was like friends with them and stuff, but we kind of talked more that same day, and they, they worked me in. I, like I, I started some games my, that year um, for varsity um, and loved it. I mean, I, it was everything I expected. I remember that first time I like ran out for like my starting like starting lineup having my name announced and I was just like wow that's it really like it I had always dreamt of it and it was it, it was like that's pretty surreal like walking out and I was like that's pretty cool I did high school in three years um, instead of four so technically whatever that middle year you whatever you want to refer to it as but that year would have been my last year playing basketball because uh, the following year I turned According to like IHSA rules, you can't be uh, 20 years old when the sectional or like the, the postseason of your sport starts. And so, um, because of that rule, I was in a, ineligible to play basketball my senior year. I pl still played soccer, so I got two years of soccer and two years of basketball. But um, unfortunately, that last year I wasn't able to play basketball. But I, I still managed. Like I was a manager on that team too. 
Um, and I just, I knew I didn't want to just completely abandon it. And I love those, my teammate, like my former teammates and stuff. I love those guys. And so I, you know, I worked out with them and stuff and tried to do everything I could to put them in a position to succeed. So um, that was kind of my way of giving back my senior year, I guess. For Jamie Miller and all, Dan Byler, good night. So I remember first semester of my freshman year last year, I just, I mean, I didn't, I went to classes and stuff, but I wasn't really involved in much. Especially first semester, I remember last year anyway, I, I spent so much time in the HRC just like playing basketball, just because I would, it was a place where I could go at any, pretty much any part of the day in the afternoon or whatever, and there's people playing. Um, it doesn't really matter who it is. I just love just, subbing in and just playing and, and playing with people, you know, all kinds of people. I've, I've met so many, so many people just playing basketball at the HRC. And, and that, that's how I was spending a lot of my time with Butler uh, basketball, you know, managing and stuff. It's just, it, it's a lot. Um, and, that, and that's kind of what I want to jump back to with the, all the time that I was spending playing basketball in the HRC. I now have pretty much filled with basketball here, managing. Um, being a part of the team is it's been incredible but being around like a D1 program and and getting back into that coaching that kind of coaching setting the the tactics and stuff of basketball like learning and the, just knowledge of the game I've, I've really found to be uh, like insane here I think growing up Amish there's there's a lot of intangibles that you kind of pick up along the way. It's hard to explain unless you're unless you're Amish you kind of understand exactly what I'm saying but it's because of the fact that it's such a simple life and you don't have all these outside distractions and all these all this noise and stuff you kind of you kind of choose to be more like um, not complacent but kind of more comfortable with whatever's going on around you I think me going through that experience and kind of um, going through a lot of obstacles and, and stuff like that. And I'm not saying that any of this stuff is harder than a lot of other people face. It's just different. It's not typical, I guess. And I think because of that, I, I kind of bring um, a little different, something a little different to the table, I guess, a little bit different taste of life, I guess. It's not like I left because I just have some, this huge, you know, negative feeling about the Amish because I really don't. I. Like I wouldn't, if, if given the chance, I would never choose to not like have the, the background that I do. I, I love my family, I would do anything in my family. The Amish culture to me, it's, it's given me so much that it would be unfair of me to place it in that kind of light. It was just me, me simply just kind of realizing at an early age that this is probably not how, how I was gonna like wanna spend the rest of my life and I just couldn't see myself being like a grown Amish man and, and like, I, I just couldn't envision that, I guess. It just really wasn't for me. It's not, it's not like I have anything against them or anything. It's, it's really just, it was a personal choice. Um, and, I, and I don't regret it at all, but uh, that's kind of what I take away from that, I guess. Ipil Norman Miller, Nipinik Vox Amish. <laughs>